Hi! Hello! How are ya? My name's Ben, this is Azar, and on today's video I'm going to be talking about my current PC build, which I probably think is one of the best budget all-round PC builds for gaming and content creation. So a little over a year ago, I actually upgraded my PC and got a whole new one built. Now I didn't go all out, I just got something, you know, that was good enough for what I was doing at the time, which was a lot of photography and videography work. Uh, but could also play a few games. Obviously my priorities have changed, this channel is a completely different thing, so I've actually needed to do some minor upgrades to the PC uh, to kind of make it more personalised uh, and efficient for what I'm doing with this channel now. So just over two weeks ago, my friend and I did some upgrades on the PC. So basically, I basically just sent through to him uh, what I'm sort of looking for, uh, what upgrades I'm wanting to do. Now these weren't big upgrades like upgrading the CPU or GPU, or anything like that because I've actually got a pretty decent CPU and a not too bad GPU. But the main upgrade was adding more RAM, adding a bit of cooling and doing an all-round overclock on it because I hadn't had that done to the PC yet. Now when I was talking to him and sort of saying uh, what I'm needing to get out of the PC, my PC does a pretty decent job of playing most games and also doing a lot of uh, video editing and sound editing. So using programs like Adobe Premiere uh, and obviously Lightroom and Photoshop but also using audio programs like Cubase for any recording uh, or music based content that I want to do. And also a big thing for me is I've been so so into Star Citizen at the moment. Now if you know what Star Citizen is and you play PC, uh, you just know it's a PC killer. I mean there's people out there that are using, you know, full on builds with like 4090s, top of the range CPUs, water cooling everything uh, and they're still struggling on there. And a big reason behind that is the servers. But something I noticed about mine and from what I read online is it's actually not enough RAM that I had in the system uh, at the time and that was causing a lot of you know loading issues and performance issues. So before I, I did this upgrade I actually only had about 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Obviously needing to up that this day and age 32 gig is a minimum you're seeing 64 and uh, no, 128 I think is another one uh, so people are going all out but like I said at the start of this video I did these upgrades and they are minor. This computer's fantastic like it does the majority of things that I need it to do. It runs games, uh, you know, medium to high sort of uh, settings very, very well. And also handles Adobe Premiere for video editing uh, fantastically. I don't think that's a word, but fantastically is the new word of the video. <laughs> so like I said, what I wanted to start with is some more RAM. So basically I added some Vengeance RGB Pro uh, 32 gig uh, dual slot RAM. Now I was originally wanting uh, the black one, but the computer shop that we went to didn't have any. We originally bought some, but they were faulty, so we had to go back, get some more, pop these white ones in there. It actually looks really good in the PC build, as you can see on the video that I'll be showing. But yeah, this was the gained me the biggest performance, and you'd think, oh, RAM's not gonna help an awful lot with games, but it does when it's caching memory and everything like that, when it's loading in lots of train, which Star Citizen is. There's, you know, 10 different planets that you can go to with moons and, you know, it's just so much that the computer's trying to take in. So having that extra memory is gonna help a lot, especially because I've got a decent CPU. Like I've got a Ryzen 5 3600. It, it's about a year and a half, two years uh, old now. So definitely there's better CPUs out there, but it's, it, it's, it's not a crap CPU by any stretch of the means. Uh, and obviously graphics card, I've only got a 1650 Super. Uh, now it does a great job, uh, it, it renders games very very well it renders videos very very well obviously I could go all out and go you know a 3000 series or a 4000 series but uh, I, I don't know three four grand to drop on a graphics card and that's again going back to this video being about if you're wanting to keep your pricing down for a PC but you're also wanting something that can handle the majority of the tasks 
my PC list here is pretty good. So closing off on the RAM, like I said, Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. You don't have to get the RGB one or the Pro one. Uh, you know, it's the same speed whether you have flashy lights on it or not. But I thought because I was adding all the fan and the water cooling in, which I'll show you soon, uh, I may as well, you know, have it on the RAM. Now something we found while we're doing this upgrades is we actually didn't have enough light slots, I can't remember the name of them off the motherboard, but didn't have enough light RGB slots and fan slots uh, off the motherboard. And we ended up buying this adapter to fit all the new fans onto it and it overloaded it so I needed to get a new motherboard. Which probably wasn't a bad thing because the motherboard was again a year and a half, two years old. Uh, so getting a newer, you know, newer model, slightly better uh, motherboard is obviously going to speed up all the processes of your computer because it you know, it's the hub of the computer. So I ended up going with the Pro B550M by MSI. I could barely read this box, it's very hard to read. <laughs> MSI, it's a Gen 3 as well. So what I had beforehand was the B450, uh, it was the gaming motherboard. Uh, it did well, but obviously it shorted out when we were you know, connecting everything and going to boot it up, so need to get a new one. B450s are quite old now, so uh, going to B550 was all they pretty much had. And I definitely am noticing a little bit quicker response time. Uh, obviously the upgrades are helping, but uh, also because the motherboards, what, you know, your RAM, your CPU, your GPU all connects to, if that's old, you're gonna be getting a slight bottleneck there as well. Uh, not a super, super flash upgrade, you know, motherboards, even though they, you know, they're the hub of the computer, they're often overlooked. Yeah, it's it's definitely helped improve uh, this build, which is always a plus. Now, moving on to the cooling. So, because uh, my friend who's quite tech savvy, he's actually got a tech channel on YouTube that I'll link uh, down below. Uh, he wanted to do uh, an overclock on the computer because it hadn't had that done. And he said, you know, you've got so much potential for more performance out of your computer, but we just, you know, got to do an overclock on it. But obviously to overclock, you need the computer to run cooler. And at the time, my computer only had a single fan on it and obviously the CPU fan. So he said a big thing, because we're overclocking the CPU, that heats up the most, uh, is going to be getting a CPU cooler, uh, which is a Cooler Master liquid cooler with an RGB light as well. If you want to know the exact model number, it is the Master Liquid ML120LV2RG. Be. That was a lot of words. It's just got liquid and a fan and makes it cooler. Cool. <laughs> Obviously that meant that it's going to be keeping the CPU temperatures a lot cooler because when you're overclocking there's a lot more stress on it. It's going to be heating up a lot so you need to keep it nice and stable. But that was a massive part for the build, particularly with the overclocking uh, and it looks, looks really, really sick. Also to add to the cooling we added three more fans. Like I said, I only had the one fan on it uh, when before I did this build. So we added these three more fans into it to have a bit more circulation. My mate explained the way that he hooked it up as to do with like pressures and flows and I, I'm not tech savvy with computers. So I was like, cool, you just, you just do you, make it cool. Uh, That'd be nice. So currently I'm running two fans on the front and one on the top. And obviously the CPU fan at the back that's part of the cooler. Uh, we were originally gonna put the three fans at the front, but because of the case uh, and there was something to do, my case has got a built-in CD slot who uses CDs anymore. So we couldn't have them all at the front there. So we've got one at the top, which is kind of good. So you've got air sucking from all directions and then air blowing out as well. So obviously you're getting the cool air coming in, but you want the hot air to go somewhere as well. I know I'm explaining it wrong, but that's what he sort of did. He used a terminology for it again. I'm a potato at uh, PC tech stuff. So I was just like, cool. Now another minor upgrade that we did was I actually added another SSD to it. So I do have the PCIe, uh, you know, it sort of looks like a stick of gum. Uh, SSD in it at the moment, which is my C drive. But I was actually loading off all my games and doing all my editing for videos off that drive. And he said, no, because it was so full, when you're playing a game and it's caching, if it doesn't have enough RAM, it actually uses up some of the C drive space. And there was none there, so it was choking it all. So I added another SSD, wasn't the 
the PCIe one. It was just like a, a plug-in one. Again, no idea what they're actually called, but it was a it was a miniature SSD. Uh, so basically, that's where I'm running all my games and programs off for the most part. I think I've got all of them on there except Cubase. Cubase couldn't fit on there, but I've got Adobe and all my gaming apps on there. Uh, so that's obviously freed up a lot more space on C drive, which means the computer, because Windows and everything's on there, can just have a bit more, you know, space to stretch its legs, as it got explained to me. <laughs> and as I've been saying, yeah, he actually didn't overclock on. Uh, I've got no idea what he did on there. Um, he was tweaking voltages and speeds and I... I just want to play Pew Pew games that don't lag. <laughs> so he did an overclock on there, which... Honestly, like even on the graphics card and CPU, I've noticed a huge difference in frames. So yeah, like I said, we did the RAM upgrade, we did the cooling upgrade with both the uh, water cooler for the CPU, uh, and also adding three RGB fans as well. Uh, and then did the motherboard upgrade because the old one crapped itself. Uh, and did the all round uh, overclock on everything. So it's running a lot better now. I'm having a lot better performance on games like um, uh, even Call of Duty, the latest one, uh, Modern Warfare 2, uh, and also Star Citizen as well. I'm yet to hop into Cyberpunk, which I'm really, really keen for. I'm definitely going to record some videos or stream on it before the new expansion, Fan Phantom Liberty, comes out. But that's quite an intense game, both graphics, graphics and CPU-wise. So, yeah, I can't wait to get on that. And obviously, doing videos as well, it's rendering a lot quicker. It's buffering through the timeline a lot quicker, especially when I'm using 4K footage as well, which you're watching at the moment. Yeah, it's. I definitely think it was worth it. Now, obviously, the title of this video and the theme of this video is not just to talk about my upgrades, but to sort of talk about why I think this is such a good all-round build for someone that isn't wanting to spend, you know, four, even three grand on a PC. Because let's face it, not all of us have that sort of money. Unlike some people just lump four or five grand onto a PC when what I've got at the moment actually does a really, really good job of it. So I will put it up on the screen, uh, just a screenshot from Specky to show what I'm sort of running in this build. So you can have a bit of a look at it, have a look at the prices. I haven't done a price list, but to be honest, I think when I built this computer originally it was something like just over a thousand and then uh, the other day I think we spent about two three hundred dollars on all the upgrades so uh, getting the RAM getting the motherboard and getting the uh, the coolers so let's say fifteen hundred dollars for this build but comparing that to something that's double and sometimes even triple if you're doing like a dual card setup or something like that it's it's a really good way to go bang for your buck system so yeah not a super super long one today and i'm sorry if i'm not explaining you know the things correctly as i said I'm not super, super uh, tech savvy when it comes to, you know, PC components and upgrades. I've got a general idea, but that's why I got him in to, um, you know, do all the upgrades for me and make sure that it was going to work and there wasn't going to be too many bottlenecks and stuff like that. Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. It was just meant to be a real short one here and hopefully you can look at these parts and go, yep, yeah, I'm happy to spend, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars talking about Australian dollars here and get something decent. I mean, have a look at them, have a look at the reviews on all the parts that I I've got like I said it all works well on my system it obviously can't do everything it can't run games at a hundred percent you know uh, quality or anything like that performance wise it's pretty good if you're just setting everything sort of at that medium and you wanting to do some video editing and stuff like that so I'm gonna stop rambling because I've really got no idea what I'm talking about but I wanted to record this video anyway so I hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like if you didn't roll it back and give it another watch. And as always, my name's Ben. This is Isisart. And I'll see you in the next one.